Hello, this is Dr. Hana Asil, and this is about uh, organic chemistry, the chemistry of arenes or benzene derivatives. This is for Unit 5 of the A level chemistry at Excel. So let us take a look. What are arenes? Arenes are organic compounds containing one or more benzene rings. So basically, they are derivatives of benzene. So they can have more than one ring, or they can have one ring with substituents on them, a bromobenzene, chlorobenzene, methylbenzene, and so on. So these are arenes. And we're going to talk about uh, the chemistry of these compounds. So these are all derivatives of benzene. What is benzene? Benzene is C6H6. The structure is something like this. So Kekulay structures show the benzene ring with alternating single bond, double bond. So you can either have the first carbon with a single bond with the next carbon or a double bond with the next carbon. So these are alternating single and double bond. But actually, the structure is not just one of these Kekulay structures. It is an overall structure in which the double bond is um, spread out on all the carbons or delocalized p orbitals on all the carbons so actually when we draw benzene we draw it with that st structure that has a circle in the middle that is the simplified form of the benzene ring so what is this simplified form it is actually from the pi bond in the benzene ring each of these carbons has a p orbital now all of these are delocalized on the benzene ring. So that means these p orbitals are spread out on all the six carbons in the benzene ring. So when we draw it, we draw it with a circle in the middle, not a double bond and a single bond on uh, any of these bonds. So this is the structure of benzene. Pi bonds delocalized from the p orbitals of the six carbon atom. Now, why did we say that that was the structure? Kekulé thought that the structure had alternating single and double bonds, just like the structure drawn. But now we know that it has a delocalized structure, which we said we're going to draw like this, with a circle to indicate that this double bonds are actually spread out on all the six carbon. Now, two main evidence for the delocalized structure of benzene include, first of all, the fact that only one structure of 1,2-dichlorobenzene was found. What are we talking about? If this benzene has two chlorines attached to it, so the two chlorines can either be right next to each other, so we call them 1,2-dichlorobenzene, or um, one carbon away from each other, so this is 1,3-dichloro, or two carbons away from each other, so we call that 1,4-dichloro. Now, the 1,2-dichlorobenzene, I can draw it like that with a single bond between the two chlorines. But if the Kekulé structure is correct, then I should have two forms, one with a single bond between the two chlorines, another one with a double bond between the two chlorines. Actually, we don't have that. We only have one structure for the 1,2-dichlorobenzene, and that is taken as uh, an evidence that actually it's not alternating single and double bond it is the delocalized structure so the first evidence for the delocalized structure is the fact that the isomers of dichlorobenzene in which one has a single bond between the carbon atom bonded to the chlorine and the other has a double bond this has not been found 
We only have one form of 1,2-dichlorobenzene. So this means that the double bond is actually delocalized. The other evidence is that the X-ray diffraction shows that all the bonds in benzene are the same length. Now, if some of them are single and some of them are double, then the uh, lengths will be different. Remember, the single bond is longer than the double bond. So you should have bonds of different lengths, but actually uh, they found that all the six carbon-carbon bonds uh, have the same length. So this is one of the questions that we have on this. X-ray diffraction of benzene provides evidence that benzene molecules or what? Which of these would be from the evidence of the X-ray diffraction? Remember that the X-ray diffraction tells me that the carbon-carbon bond lengths are equal. The information about benzene not provided by X-ray diffraction is what? We said we can use X-ray diffraction as information about the structure of benzene, which of these is not applicable to the X-ray diffraction? Remember that we said the X-ray diffraction will say that all the carbon-carbon bonds are the same, the bond angles are the same, the bond lengths are the same, but the bond energies have nothing to do with what we're talking about, okay? The X-ray diffraction will not tell me uh, the bond energies. The molecule is planar, yes, that would be uh, from the X-ray diffraction. So the one that is not provided by the X-ray diffraction is the fact about the bond energies of these bonds. Another question says benzene is sometimes represented by a Kekulé structure. If this were the only structure of benzene, what would be the total number of isomers of dichlorobenzene? Remember we said, if it is not delocalized, if it is just this structure, then I will have how many isomers that have two chlorines on the benzene? So we said that we're going to have the 1,4 and the 1,3, but the 1,2 should be two different structures. So I should have four different isomers if the Kekulé structure were correct. How many sigma bonds and pi bonds are there in a molecule of benzene? Well, let's remind ourselves. Remember, if we have single and double bonds, the single bonds are sigma. A double bond would have one sigma and one pi. Do you remember that? So how many sigma bonds, all the single bonds in there are sigma bonds, and the pi the double bond has one sigma and one pi, so we have a total of 12 sigma bonds and three pi bonds. Remember, each double bond has one sigma and one pi. Okay, the delocalized electrons in benzene result from the overlap of what kind of orbital? Remember, we said the delocalized electrons in benzene result from the overlap of what? Of p orbital, not s. And then when they overlap, the p orbitals form what? They form pi bonds. So remember the delocalized electrons in benzene are from p orbitals in order to form pi bonds. Okay, then we need to talk about reactions of benzene. And the first reaction here is combustion or burning. Of course, combustion or burning means we uh, react it with oxygen in the air. Now, this can give different products. Remember, if it is complete combustion, it gives carbon dioxide plus water. But if it is incomplete, it could also give carbon monoxide and carbon alone. So when it gives all of this, this forms a smoky flame. Remember that burning of benzene forms a smoky flame because it forms carbon, which is a solid, and carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, 
water, all of these parts. The main reaction of benzene is electrophilic substitution. So remember that benzene does electrophilic substitution. Now, if we're reacting benzene with bromine, we need a catalyst. Our catalyst is anhydrous FeBr3 catalyst. This puts a bromine on the benzene, so this gives me bromobenzene. The other product is HBr. We could do the same for chlorine. So chlorine with anhydrous aluminum chloride as a catalyst. This will put a chlorine on the benzene ring, and the other product is HCl. We need to know these uh, reactions. If he says, for example, give the equation for the reaction of benzene with bromine, so the reaction of benzene with bromine is what we just talked about. But he's saying include state symbols. What would be the state symbols for this? Do you know the state symbol for benzene? You should know that benzene is a liquid, bromine is a liquid, bromobenzene also is a liquid, and HBr is a gas. Okay? What is the mechanism for this? Remember, we said this is electrophilic substitution reaction. So, how does it work now? We have a catalyst. What is the role of the catalyst? The catalyst accepts electrons from the Br. So we have this complex that is formed in the first reaction. And then we said the benzene ring has electrons that are delocalized, or you could draw it as a Kekulé structure. Now, electrons from the benzene ring attack the slightly positive Br to release the other bromine, and we end up with a carbocation in the benzene ring. Now, this carbocation will be uh, removed by donating electrons from the bond attached to the hydrogen. So this is the mechanism for electrophilic substitution of the benzene ring so that we form an uh, halogeno benzene. So if we have chlorobenzene, for example, you should realize that formation of the chlorobenzene is highly stable. So a chlorobenzene bond is very stable. This is because it can donate its electrons, the chlorine can donate its electrons to form what we call resonance structures. So these different structures where you can distribute the uh, negative charge all over the benzene ring, this makes this compound stable. So this is a very stable compound. Another reaction of benzene with bromine is if you use UV light, and actually we heat in UV light. If we heat it in UV light, in this case, we have what we call free radical addition reaction, and we add bromine to each of the carbons that we have in there. So this is an addition reaction. We're not substituting it. We're adding bromine and it gives bromine on each of the six carbons. So it actually results in the formation of hexabromocyclohexane. Remember that the benzene ring, no double bonds inside, is now a cyclohexane. So this is called a free radical addition reaction. This happens when benzene reacts with bromine in presence of UV light. Remember, the other one was not using UV light. We were using a catalyst, FeBr3. So, in that case, we substituted one of the hydrogens for a Br. Okay, let's take a look at this. What is the organic product when benzene reacts with excess bromine in the presence of UV light? Remember, I'm reacting benzene in UV light. What happens? 
we remove all the double bonds so there is no double bond inside and we put bromines on each of the corbins so which is my product remember the one in d is my product not the one in b the one in b is still a benzene ring no we are going to remove all the double bonds inside the benzene ring so that it becomes a cyclohexane and we put bromines on each carbon this is if benzene reacts with bromine in presence of uv light when excess bromine reacts with benzene in presence of uv light the product below is formed this type of reaction is what we said what is this type of reaction remember this is a free radical addition Okay, another reaction is the formation of an alkyl benzene. So I want to put uh, an alkyl group. You know that an alkyl group is a carbon with hydrogens on it. So this is called Friedel Crafts alkylation reaction. So it's a Friedel Crafts alkylation reaction. I have the benzene. I want to put a methyl group on the benzene. That means I will react it with what? With methyl chloride in presence of aluminum chloride. Again, if I'm trying to add chlorine to this benzene ring that already has CH3, then I can add chlorine in presence of, remember we add halogen in presence of aluminum chloride or bromine in presence of FeBr3. And this puts chlorine on the benzene ring are we following so if i want to put a methyl group i react it with ch3cl in presence of aluminum chloride now if i want to put a chlorine we just said the previous uh, reaction that we were talking about is if i want to put a chlorine i react it with chlorine in presence of aluminum chloride and that means if I have a methyl group, it adds a chlorine on the benzene ring. And usually the chlorine will go in. In carbon number two, remember that the carbon that has CH3 is regarded as carbon number one. So in this case, I put the chlorine on the next carbon. So that is two chloro, methyl benzene. Or on carbon number four. So this is four chloro methyl benzene if i put chlorine in uv light remember we have a methyl group on the benzene and you're going to put chlorine in uv light what happens in this case you are replacing one of the hydrogens of the methyl group by chlorine. So this is a free radical substitution reaction. Uh, reactions of alkanes with halogen. If you remember, alkane with halogen, so CH3 with a halogen, in presence of UV light, you put a chlorine on the CH. Are we following these reactions? Okay. So I want to put a methyl group. I react it with methyl chloride in presence of anhydrous aluminum chloride. If I want to put any other alkyl group, I want to put an ethyl group, C2H5. I put C2H5Cl with anhydrous aluminum chloride. Okay, you need to know the mechanism of the Friedel Crafts alkylation. So we're trying to put a methyl group on the benzene. We said this is in presence of aluminum chloride. Again, the aluminum chloride accepts electrons from the chlorine, from the methyl chloride. It gives this intermediate, and this breaks up to give me a methyl with a carbocation. So the double bond on the benzene ring or the electrons on the benzene ring will attack the carbocation so that we attach the ch3 to the benzene ring this forms a positive um, carbocation on the benzene ring then the aluminium chloride that took the other chloride so it's now alcl4 minus 
will attack the hydrogen and the electrons in the bond will go to the benzene ring. Please learn these mechanisms. You need to know the role of the aluminum chloride in uh, these reactions. It's a catalyst, it is regenerated at the end, and this is how it reacts. Okay, another uh, reaction is with acyl chloride. So if I have ethanoyl chloride, I can put the acyl group on the benzene ring. So I want to make a benzene ring with a C double bond O methyl on it. I react it with ethanoyl chloride. Again, in presence of anhydrous aluminum chloride, this puts the acyl group on the benzene ring. Again, what is the mechanism? The electrons on the chlorine of acyl group are donated to the aluminum chloride. And this forms a carbocation that is attacked by the benzene ring this makes a positive charge inside the benzene ring. A removal of the hydrogen and donation of the electrons to the benzene ring results in the product. Please practice these mechanisms. You should know what is happening. So this is a question. Which reagent and catalyst will convert benzene to Phenyl ethanone. So I want to make phenyl ethanone, that compound that he has. I'm going to react it with which reagent and which catalyst. Remember, I will need to react it with ethanoyl chloride. Ethanoyl chloride in presence of what? In presence of aluminium chloride as a catalyst. This other question says aluminum chloride catalyzes the reaction of benzene and ethanoyl chloride. This is because the aluminum chloride does what? When we use it as a catalyst for this reaction, the aluminum chloride does what? We said the aluminum chloride is an electron pair acceptor. It accepts the electron pairs from the chlorine so it helps to make the carbocation that will be attacked by the benzene ring. Okay, another reaction that you need to know is nitration of the benzene. I need to put a nitro group on the benzene. So what do I react it with? I react it with nitric acid in presence of concentrated sulfuric acid. So I want to add a nitro group. To a benzene ring, I need to react it with nitric acid and concentrated sulfuric acid. If it is just benzene ring, it puts one nitro group on the benzene ring. If I have a methyl group on the benzene, then the nitro goes into carbon number two, number four, and number six. So we end up with a two, four, six trinitromethyl benzene. What is the mechanism? We put nitric with sulfuric. So the first thing that happens is the nitric and the sulfuric react together to form a nitronium ion. Can you see the nitronium ion? So the N with double bond to two oxygens and it has a positive charge on the N. This now is attacked by the benzene ring attaches the nitro group to the benzene ring and then the hydrogen donates these electrons of his of its bond to the benzene ring and i end up with a nitro group on the benzene ring so when he says when benzene reacts with a mixture of concentrated nitric and sulfuric the reaction is what what type of reaction is that again remember this kind of reaction is where you have the benzene attacking the NO2 positive and so on. This is electrophilic substitution reaction. Remember we said most of the reactions that benzene does is electrophilic substitution. Okay, another question says benzene is nitrated using a mixture of concentrated nitric and sulfuric acid. In this reaction, 
the concentrated sulfuric acid acts as what? So when I have this reaction again, nitric acid with concentrated sulfuric acid, the concentrated sulfuric acid is acting as what? We said it's acting as a catalyst, first of all. And it's acting, of course, as an acid. So it's an acid and it's a catalyst. Another reaction of benzene is with what we call fuming sulfuric acid. And you have to know that the word fuming sulfuric acid refers to what? It refers to concentrated sulfuric acid containing dissolved sulfur trioxide. So sulfur trioxide in concentrated sulfuric acid is what we call fuming sulfuric acid. And we react that with benzene if I want to add a sulfonic acid group on the benzene ring. And notice that the sulfonic acid group is SO3H. So this is benzene sulfonic acid. You react benzene with fuming sulfuric acid, which is SO3 with concentrated sulfuric acid. And this puts SO3H on the benzene ring. So this question says, benzene reacts with fuming sulfuric acid to form benzene sulfonic acid. Fuming sulfuric acid is what? You remember what we said? We said, what is fuming sulfuric acid? Fuming sulfuric acid is concentrated sulfuric acid containing dissolved sulfur trioxide. What is the product when benzene reacts with fuming sulfuric acid? Again, we said when we react benzene with fuming sulfuric acid, it puts what on the benzene ring? We said it puts SO3H. What does the SO3H look like? Remember that that is the structure that we have in D. Can you see that? Okay. Phenol. What is phenol? Phenol is just a benzene ring with an OH on it. So phenol is benzene with an OH. And also you have delocalized electrons from the benzene ring with the delocalized electrons from the oxygen of the OH. So all of this makes the, uh, ben uh, the phenol more reactive. So, bromination of phenol. When I want to brominate phenol, remember that if I just have benzene, um, I need to put a catalyst. Remember, we said bromine in FeBr3. But for phenol, I don't need a catalyst. I just put it in bromine water. It puts bromine at carbon number 2 and 4 and 6. So, this is 246 tribromophenol. And my other product is HCl. Okay, so remember that to add bromine to a phenol, I can just add bromine water. I don't need a catalyst. And the product here appears as a white precipitate. So when we add phenol to bromine, I get a white precipitate of 246 tribromophenol. So let us compare between benzene and phenol and an alkene like cyclohexene. What kind of reactions or what is the difference between the reactions of each of these? Now, if we look at benzene and phenol, you should know that in benzene and phenol, the pi electrons are delocalized. So this forms a stable electron cloud and that means that they undergo electrophilic substitution. So if we go back in benzene, we said the delocalized electron ring is very stable. So a catalyst is needed for the reaction, for example, with bromine. So if I'm reacting the benzene with bromine, we said we need a catalyst. This is because the uh, electron ring is very stable. But if we heat uh, the benzene in UV light, we said this will react to give uh, bromine on each of the carbons, and this was uh, an addition reaction to the benzene ring. 
Now, when we talk about phenol, we said the reaction is faster than benzene. Remember that we said phenol is the benzene with an OH. Now, the electrons on the OH can be delocalized. Uh, the lone pair of electrons in the oxygen overlap with the delocalized pi cloud of the benzene ring, and this increases the electron density of the ring. So phenol reacts with bromine water at room temperature. I don't need a catalyst. And we said when it reacts, it gives 2, 4, 6 tribromophenol. What about cyclohexene? In cyclohexene, the pi electrons of the double bond are not delocalized. So they undergo electrophilic addition reactions just like any other alkene and they react easily with bromine for example to form 1,2-dibromocyclohexane. Are we following all of this? Okay, so a question may say bromine reacts more readily with phenol than with benzene. Remember we said the reaction with phenol is easier than benzene. This is because what? Remember we said in phenol, the lone pair of electrons on the oxygen can overlap with the uh, pi cloud of the benzene ring. And that means the lone pair of electrons on the oxygen atom in phenol overlap with the delocalized electrons in the benzene ring. And we said that makes phenol react more readily than benzene. What about nitration of phenol? I want to add a nitro group. Remember, when we wanted to add a nitro group to benzene, what did we do? We added nitric acid and concentrated sulfuric acid as a catalyst. But here for phenol, we just add dilute nitric acid. It adds the nitro group either on carbon number two or on carbon number four. This reaction is still electrophilic substitution reaction, but it happens easier more, or more easily than with benzene. So the lone pair of electrons attack the NO2 positive that is formed from the nitric acid, and then the hydrogen donates the electrons of the bond to the positively charged um, ring to form a nitro group on either carbon number two or carbon number four. So if we say a reaction, a question says phenol reacts with dilute nitric acid, give the formula of one organic product of this reaction and state the type and mechanism of the reaction which is occurring. So he just wants you to say what is the type and what is the mechanism. Of course, we said, if he wants the one, one of the organic products, you can either put the nitro of carbon number two or the nitro on carbon number four. Now, what type of reaction is that? Remember, this is electrophilic substitution reaction. And that's the end of this chapter. I hope uh, you find this useful. Please share the video. Um, and keep listening and thank you.